I just hate the media always portraying South Africa as, as a place where we saw poverty stricken and not actually, you know, uh, having this other side. You know, we, we also have so many things. Whenever you speak to a person who's at the other side of the world, they'll ask you a very ridiculous question, such as, um, do you do you see monkeys strolling outside your, your yard? You know, which, which I find very disturbing because they could have found out more through the media, but the media doesn't really portray us as good people. They, they portray us with so much pride, so, so many channels, and they, they don't show, you know, that we, we as a country we still young in our democracy and we have so much potential. We live in a very diverse country, so you get to, to, to learn other people's languages, learn how to interact with other people from other um, religions and, and, and traditions. So like growing up in South Africa, it's, it's, some, it's a learning curve for like learning how to live with other people. You know, in our communities, we're not, we're not taught uh, to, to, to do crime and such things. We're actually taught, you know, to love other people, to have means of survival. Uh, we call them born freeze, who were born after apartheid. They are born freeze, the born free generation. They can go anywhere, any school, anywhere they want to, to study anywhere, to do anything. Because sometimes black people are not allowed in, in towns. They only allowed in that, uh, locals only, but they, they're not supposed to go to town. And then off carrying IDs wherever they go. But now, this is why I say they are born free. Opportunities are there, work is there, I mean, they study free. So everything is it's better now compared to, to past. Back then, the, the kids, the, the teenagers, like they will not go to school because of some strikes and like they fight with the teachers and the police and they, they, they start the shooting and stoning each other. But now we have this freedom to go to school free. And also the education system it was very poor back then. We used to go to school but we'd learn all the language, all the subjects in our mother tongue. We'd learn maths and physical science and all that but using our own mother tongue because we are not allowed to learn English. During the apartheid era, black people, uh, black and white people were being separated. So uh, we black people were the ones who were, who were in the struggle, like fighting to be accepted as we are. But now we and white and white people were in the same struggle of fighting HIV and AIDS, poverty, inequalities. Inequalities, I mean like the gap between white and black, like whites are more richer than black people. So we are trying to to close that gap that everyone has, uh, everyone must have the same opportunities. Yeah, I think the struggle now it's between it's for both blacks and whites. Like we are fighting HIV together. Yeah. With young people, we as young people, we are afraid of expressing our cultures. I'm afraid to show that I'm a, I'm a Zulu or a Metswana or a Shangan because of, of that stigma. People will say things, bad things about me. Because of nice you saying that it's all about Western now. We are more Westernized than we are supposed to be more Africans. You know, not everybody is proud to be an African. This is what I always say to people don't call me black person, call me an African because of, I'm proud of my African roots. There's nothing I can do. I won't change anything. I'm an African and I'll die in Africa. You see, so the problem now is with young people that we are afraid, more afraid of our culture. We can express the way we want to express, but now it's difficult because of stigma. People stigmatize you. Nowadays we have so much freedom to exercise our cultures, our religions, and etc. But I don't think we as young people are on, on, on that our road of actually embracing them. Because taking a look at us now, are we young people, you know, due to globalization, we have fallen into, into those hands of um, cultures such as hip hop cultures. You'd never see, you know, us young people wearing our traditional gear, going to a mall, you know, and, and embracing ourselves. You'd actually see us wearing our hip hop things and, you know, uh, following musical icons such as Kanye West. No, no, that's how we regard you as cool. And now if you come with your Ipe shoe, traditional gear, and I was like, oh my gosh, now she's speaking, she's speaking. Yeah, you know, such things, yeah. I think we need to have the freedom, but it's just that due to globalization, yeah. As 
say this only is a conflict because the morals that the West have are, are different to the ones we have. So the music enforces a different mindset to our children, so that's why the parents are writing. And also the message that some songs can portray, they are not that good to for a child to be listening. I mean, the rap that you can be listening these days, uh, the swearing, the vulgar, the bad ways, killing and all that and drugs. So those things, they are quite normal, especially in the American cities and the Western. But to us, we are trying to preserve our children and grow them, the African race. So it's where the conflicts of the two things engage. The moral this that now we have in South Africa, we have the like of moral regeneration, this thing called moral regeneration, to, to, to revive our culture, to, to, to come back in. Their parents are not against uh, Western music, total, total, but they, they select that there's this kind of music, this is not good for our kids. It influences them in the wrong way. Yes, there are the songs that are influential in a way, and, in, and the parents, what they fear is, uh, what the, the your own man says to you, you might try. Not all of us uh, have the backbone to say no to everything. They are afraid, but as people we different. Not all of us follow those things. Not all of us want to be there. Not all of us think that that's something we have to be. We just like sober minded. Like, we're not like all the people who like I'm a rap, I'm gonna look like 50 cents and I'm gonna have five bullets on my on the back of my okay. My dad doesn't want me to hang with guys, doesn't want me to listen to hip hop, wants me to wear those long skirts, you know, and act like like this good, good child. Of which, you know, I'm not there, you know. Yeah, so I feel like I'm living a double life with my dad, only with my dad, you know, even if I'm wearing something shall I put my dad now is around. So yeah, but but actually I believe, you know, we can we can actually achieve achieve much more if only we could sit down with our parents and, and speak to them like mom you know this is me I cannot change I like doing this and this and now if you want me to do that my life will be so miserable and that, that's how it, it came to me you know being able to be myself with my mom now I think I'm going to do that with my dad <laughs>